Hey you guys, so this is a recorded stream. I got a little agitated at the fact that my stream kept dying and this is one of those videos I don't really want it to be into part one, part two, part three. So um, let's talk about this. I had been doing some research about why LV stock was going up and I was curious to see what was causing the sales to increase. Was it the Americans? Was it the Canadians? Was it the Chinese? And what I found out was that the Chinese is responsible for 26% of the total growth. Crazy, yeah? So what they did and they s talked about the sentences, although LV sales haven't been hit by the Chinese government's growing focus on wealth redistribution, this may pose a future threat to its revenue. And then they talked about, you know, COVID stuff. Now, this is something that's really stand out to me. This really stood out to me because if you guys are not, uh, aware about the Chinese government, they've actually been cracking down on live streamers, um, people or influencers who are showing off the wealth. And this is the article over here. In China, bragging about your wealth can get you censored. So there was this one person over here, this one influencer, they had like about 28 million followers. They had dropped about $17,000 in a presidential suite in China. And then they giggled, you know, I slept away the equivalent of multiple iPhones. Now, some people will say, oh, okay, you know, whatever, Erica. But the reason why some people make these streams is because it gets the clicks. People, I've seen it on YouTube, you know, people will make videos like, oh, I spent $30,000 on a dessert. I spent $10,000 on an ice cream bar. Just an example here. And people are curious about it. But the problem with doing these kind of streams is that although it satisfies a curiosity, it just shows like, you know, expletive kind of money. You know what I'm talking about. It makes people feel very insecure about themselves. And because of that insecurity, it can have serious repercussions. So let's look at this over here. Young people in developed countries unhappy. And they said that young people in developing nations are twice, at least twice as likely to feel happy about their lives than their richer counterparts, survey says. Indians are the happiest overall. Japanese are the most miserable. Now, if you've ever gone to Japan, the Japanese are very, very um, controlled. They, I've never seen a bummy looking Japanese person. I've been to Japan. I was at the subway. I was by far the worst dressed person there. And all I was wearing was a hoodie with some jeans and some sneakers. But everybody else there, from what I saw, they dress very clean, very professional. Uh, they look like they could have walked out of a magazine. Um, I'm not kidding you. You guys don't see any litter in Japan, but it's very, very strict and everybody falls into line. Now, because of that, um, it's people have these high expectations placed on them not to not to be basically the weakest link they are very 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 aware about how they come off as well as how they dress their image so i kind of feel that you know all this pressure although from it looks like everything's perfect from the outside you know us being outsiders the japanese being you know we're looking at them you never underestimate with the mental health of some of these individuals. There's this one person, for instance, that I'm aware of. Uh, they live in Japan, and um, they had a handbag. And you know, there was nothing wrong with the handbag, but one of their co-workers told them basically they should get a new handbag because their current handbag was looking you know, not so great. And how many times would you hear that in the United States? You wouldn't really hear that, right? That's why when you see, go to Japan and you look around at people, you don't see people with like beat up bags, beat up sneakers. They have to be very, very image conscious. So I think that um, it causes, see all this stuff? So they talked about lack of optimism, concern over jobs and pressure to succeed. So I feel that one of the reasons why people hold on to luxury item is because it shows off that you know they are successful. Even if they aren't successful, they feel that way. I also wanna talk about this, right? So let's look at a shirt like this. This is a Balenciaga pullover. You can see regular price was 1,290. Current price is $899. This is quite a substantial amount of money. Now, when you look at this, some people say, oh, this is so trendy, this Balenciaga. But if you look deeper into it, what you will see is, is that you got a name brand just blazoned all over you. And somehow, just the name brand is supposed to elevate your status that you should feel 
proud of spending $900 on this jacket. For me, I think it's kind of ridiculous. I don't, I don't see the value of just plastering Balenciaga all over me. If I wore something like Coca-Cola, you know, Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola all over my shirt, you think anybody would be like, oh, wow, Erica must be rich. No, no, because it's not a luxury brand name. So I just kind of feel that these brands, people wear it because they feel so insecure with themselves. They need to just have, they just need to pull onto the brand name to elevate their per, their value. You know, like if you don't know anything about this person you know the brand name Balenciaga and you will think okay well at least this person has money this person has to have disposable income because they just have a, a regular yellow pullover with Balenciaga on them instead of spending $900 on rent they must have so much money that they could spend $900 on a pullover and the other brand that I've spoken about that I don't like at all you guys know this is Supreme. I hate Supreme with a passion. Um, I shouldn't say that, but I really dislike it. The reason being is, let's let's talk about the Supreme brand. It is a red square with white fonts, and all it says is Supreme. So when people wear this shirt, typically males, I've never seen a female wearing Supreme. That's just what I noticed. It's supposed to what connotate that there those people wearing this brand is Supreme, and if you don't know what kind of person they are then just assume that they're supreme because they're wearing supreme you see what i'm saying like if i wore a shirt that says gemini right you would say okay well she must be a gemini so if i wear a shirt that says supreme that must what well, that's supposed to say that i think of myself as supreme or i am supreme because i have the supreme brand i've seen people where they wear this kind of stuff and they just feel they they think that they're so on top of the world because they have a red block with white letters and that that should just elevate them over all other people now supreme stuff can be pretty pricey and let's talk about the price of this stuff um it can be a couple hundred dollars for a, a something like a a hat <laughs> so the, you can see look at these um lv did a collaboration with supreme the belt is three thousand five hundred ninety nine dollars a a jacket is about four hundred twenty nine dollars look at this brand name greatest of all time oh, i don't like supreme but but outside of that right this brand has so much weight on it it's like the cool kid cool high value person quote high value person that it's actually gotten onto water bottles yes water bottles i have seen people both in hawaii and new york slap on supreme stickers on their water bottle and um some of these people they don't even have the stickers they just print it out for their printer and they put some packing tape on it and it, it says supreme like they don't have anything else on their water bottle except supreme it's like okay so do you think that your water bottle is more supreme now because you have a supreme sticker what is what is so good about this brand seriously I think it's just the elevation, this per perceived elevation that if you have, if you're, if you have a piece from this brand, then you are a superior human being, and you know you are more upscale or more hip or more cool. And I just, I'm so tired of this brand, you guys. It's not going to go any away anytime soon. But if you find yourself wearing Supreme and you wonder how come people. Uh, or women aren't being all like, oh my goodness, you know, he's so cool. You know, it's so amazing that he has all this Supreme on his watch. Uh, check yourself, seriously. Check yourself and ask yourself, okay, do you have anything more that you're leading with besides your Supreme sticker or your Supreme hat or your Supreme shirt? Um, but yeah, um, people who wear Supreme, I've had conversations with people and then they say, oh, Erica, do you know my shirt was Supreme? And I'm like, really? And they, you can, they say, yeah, yeah, look. So then you see this like, you see this big like image and then you see this like little bit of Supreme and they're so happy that they have a shirt that says Supreme on it. And oh my God, it's just, I don't want to get too into it, but that's what I'm trying to get. Like, I don't understand the value of a shirt that just has like a little Supreme on it or a big Supreme on it because what matters to me more, in my opinion, is craftsmanship, right? It's not slapping on a logo, not, not like the Balenciaga stuff, okay? It really is how well is the item made? Uh, is there any like handiwork on it? That's more important. So 
Um, I really believe that people are attracted to this kind of luxury item because a combination of depression. I also think it's also insecurity because if you are secure with yourself, you, you don't need to have a name brand slapped all over you. I think that people really don't have true confidence if they, have, they feel the need to just tell the world that they were in Balenciaga. I also think that these individuals, they have a lack of identity because you should be able to style things uh, creatively without needing to slap a logo all over. Now, I'm not saying that if you want to wear LV stuff, then you lack class. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, is that if you feel this constant desire, like you cannot be seen without a luxury branded item, or if you feel inferior, if you're not seen with it, right? You got to ask yourself, like, where's that coming from? from if you are a celebrity or an influencer i can completely understand why you might want to wear balenciaga or supreme i get it it's part of an image if i was a if i was some kind of um you know if i wanted to come off as like a real housewife i probably would slap uh, lv all over m myself but i'm not you know i'm just a regular person and i can see these items for what they are which is a money grab and as people get older my fear is that if they aren't happy with themselves, if they don't, if they're not really secure with themselves, they're going to be chasing these luxury brands, picking back off this like supreme kind of brand to make them feel superior. And it's just not good. Um, these brands are getting richer for a reason. And as you guys saw in this previous article, uh, 26% of this is coming from China. Now with the wealth redistribution, if people can't show off, I think LV is going to get negatively impacted. Um, by the fact that influencers aren't going to be wearing so much designer stuff or they're not going to be saying like, oh, look how luxurious I live. Um, it, there's not going to be like, oh, I spent $20,000 at LV. Look at all the pretty stuff that I have. I think that if people don't see it, then they're not going to be too aware about it. And I hope that these numbers drop down, but we will see. Um, I shouldn't say that. If I was a LV shareholder, I should say, yeah, I want people to keep buying LV, but I'm not. And I've known more people who go into debt chasing luxury items than people who are financially stable. Again, I'm not saying this stuff because I, I'm just like hating on luxury items. I'm saying this stuff partially because I see people give up so much of their financial security and time you know to chase this kind of brand name stuff and it just it just isn't healthy because although you might spend nine hundred dollars on a, a pullover how long is this thing gonna last are you gonna wear this for the next three years if you wear it for three years then that would be three hundred dollars a year but i think most people would not be wearing this constantly uh for three years and i also don't think most people would get one dollar per wear do you really think most people wear this for 899 times i don't think they will so just something to think about. Now, instead of going into this kind of uh, blase name brand stuff where the you got the name all over the thing, I would highly suggest going for something that shows off craftsmanship. So for example, I've said this before, I'll say it again. I really like embroidery. This is just my thing, okay? I like embroidery because when you see the needlework, it just is absolutely amazing. This is stuff that cannot be, you know, easily printed on. You can't just have it um, easily done. It's, you know, it requires time and skill. And this is, I think, very, very beautiful. Now, because we are in different times now, I would not recommend wearing gold or precious metals. But if you want to look good and if you want to stand out, I would say wear stuff that is, that elicits more identity than this kind of pullover or this kind of supreme stuff okay because this stuff you can buy it you just you, you you might feel like you stand out but you won't really stand out because this is a huge brand name and um you know every oh my god look at look at this shirt you guys like this doesn't have much class I know people would say, Erica, you just sound like you're you're being very rigid. What's wrong with um, Mickey Mouse, you know, with the two middle... F I just don't like it, okay? I don't think it sends a good message, not this image. So um, if you guys want to have something of a higher quality that, that, that does stand out, my recommendation is go for cultural clothes. Uh, clothes that reflect your culture. 
Now, for me, because I'm predominantly Chinese, I have gone on and spoken to you guys about my love for Hanfu. I thought this was really nice because it has a little bit of embroidery. But let's say you're not Chinese, or let's say you say, okay, I'm not going to wear a Hanfu. If you are Spanish, what you could do is you could wear this thing called a weepil. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing it, but it is this beautiful embroidered dress. See this? And it really shows off a lot of cultural background and cultural pride. I think that a lot of people, they don't wear our cultural clothing for whatever reason. And it's such a shame because I think when you look back and you see all the different cultural clothing made, um, it's just absolutely incredible and this these kind of clothings have a lot more soul than any balenciaga or supreme uh, piece of clothing you can see that see these women they could have worn the same kind of um clothes for the five years or you know similar style when they were younger and then growing older and it still looks very pretty see this look at that isn't that pretty So this one, they had spoken about uh, embroidery style technique, cross stitch called the, I'm not even going to pronounce that, but uh, it has history behind it. Even when it comes to the stitches, it's not just some stitch. There's history, a lot of history and a lot of symbolism here. So here's more dresses over here. And then you can see more of this detailed work as well. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. See? Bright, beautiful colors. Notice, no name brand. This kind of stuff really shows homage also to the person who created it. Um, the person, the seamstresses, the tailors, the embroiderers, and then also the designers as well. And uh, I'm going to cross out this window. My computer is not too happy because I have uh, all this stuff. Uh, so here's another one too. So I'm not saying you have to wear this stuff daily, but what I'm saying is, is that I think that these pieces stand out more than a lot of clothing out there. See, so look at the bright colors. Look at the look at the floral design, and it's a good way to show to others that you know you're proud of your heritage. You're proud of your culture. People, I, like I said, I worry in the future we're going to have people who just chase brand names and they are not aware too much about their cultural identity. We've seen this in people who have, let's say, immigrated. Uh, let's say their family is from a foreign country. Then the family moves over to a place like America. Two generations later, a lot of the cultural traditions are forgotten. Um, and sometimes I think people, they just embrace Western clothing and then they just think of their cultural clothing as being uncool. And there's a real big problem with that because I don't think that we should ever see cultural clothing as being uncool. Also, if you buy any of these clothing and let's say they are from that home country, you're also supporting the local economy there. So if you are uh, Spanish and you're buying a dress that was made in uh, Spain, then that would be a great way to you know help people back in Spain and then there also is people I was reading this article about cultural appropriation over here my thoughts about cultural appropriation is I was looking at this stuff and I said look I understand why some people will get heated but for instance, if I was wearing that dress on the far left, I would not even know that it came from an indigenous Mexican uh, community, that, that one specific design. You see the green one? But um, I don't think people are wearing these clothing to kind of say, hey, look at this, you know, we stole it from indigenous cultures. I think they, they buy it because they see the beauty in it. So although some people might be up in arms about this kind of stuff, I think, hey, if we got more people appreciating the beautiful designs, maybe, just maybe, they're going to do a little bit more research. And if they like those designs, maybe they buy traditional indigenous clothing. Maybe they buy more of it, and then it helps stimulate the local community. So I don't see it as completely a bad thing. And here's another dress as well. I thought this dress was absolutely gorgeous. If anybody wears this dress, it's just so beautiful. Let's, let's see if this thing loads.
Oh no, not that one. Where is it? Where'd that dress go? This one right here. That one. I thought this dress was really pretty. Um, I like it because you can see it looks like embroidery on the top, the sleeves, and then also the skirt area as well as the belt. So this kind of stuff, I'm sure that the pattern has some sort of cultural significance to it or it has cultural roots to it. The belt is just so pretty. I'm not going to be able to find a belt like that in some Forever 21. And a person, if they are Spanish, if they wear something like this, they're going to be able to look into, um, they're going to be able to wear it with such pride. And if someone compliments it, it's really a compliment on their heritage as well. So that is all I wanted to say about that. I hope that this stream was helpful, helpful to you. And before you go off and you decide to shower yourself in luxury stuff, ask yourself, why are you really drawn to the luxury stuff? Is it because you want, you want to write on the name of the luxury item? Or is it because, you know, you really like the style about it? Or is there a deeper issue where it might be a combination of depression, insecurity, and uh, you just don't have an identity outside of this brand name or a fashion house? Okay, you guys, I'll talk to you guys later. And as always, don't be a clown. See ya.